Hello, I'm Malcolm Harslett. It's almost impossible to believe women are still not completely treated equally in many roles in the TV industry. In this episode, we meet one of the first female faces on TV, who, like me, is still going with lots of fascinating stories. That's next on Our Time. Hello and welcome to Our Time. My special guest on this episode is Paula Nagel. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I was a guest on her show and I burnt her ears off, I think, with me talking about myself. And we're going to do that today, I hope, with Paula because she's had a long and distinguished career in media, education, the arts and board directorships from being the first female reporter on this day tonight to founding her own companies to working with the state and international governments to improve educational opportunities and research collaborations. She's worked tirelessly to improve the lives of others. She received the Order of Australia for her great work and efforts. And it's great, with great pleasure, I say hello, Paula. You do, boy. It's hey, hey, lovely Paula. to be here. Please I want to marry you. <laughs> oh, well, I'm available. Oh, OK, so am I. Oh, well, I was hoping oh, well, you'd say that. Oh, well, the end of the interview. See you soon. <laughs> that's why I invited you to my living room. Oh, you did. And that's wonderful, actually, that you make your program actually in your mm. real living yeah. room. No, it's my real living room. It is. Mm. But we couldn't have done that when you first started in television, could we? No, not at all. The cameras were too big. You had tonnes of lights everywhere. Uh, thank heavens. But it's amazing that we're still doing something that we love to do. Well, which I is, love doing it. It's just talking to people yeah. about stuff that we hope that you're interested in. So let's go back to the beginning with you. I'm always big with going back to the beginning. Oh, so am I, and I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, what year was it? Well, let no, me tell you. <laughs> I would you never say know? that, 1941. <laughs> I would never no, have said No, I wasn't born then. <laughs> no, but it was neither really, was I, strongly <laughs> <enough>. Thank heaven. <laughs> it really was 1968, and I blew it completely because um, I was back there filming, shooting something a couple of years ago. And I marched into my old studio, which is still the major studio at the ABC. At the ABC, yes. And I looked up at it and I said, oh, my God, the first time I ever worked here was in 1968. For real, that's when our show, This mm -hmm. Day Tonight, started with Clive Hale. He and yes. I were the two originals. But it gets better, this story, because we then interviewed whoever it was. And halfway through, one of the younger cameramen said, didn't you say it was your birthday the other day? And <laughs> and that you were 60, like the Beatles, you were 64. So that means when you first started filming, you were three. Yes. And I said, of course. Of course. Of course. Do you know, we're in show business generally, nobody wants to admit to their age. Then you reach an age where it actually becomes It's a sensible valuable. thing to do. Of course. Of yeah. course. But did you start as a, a little girl thinking that you would have a career? Well, we didn't have television actually back in those no. days, did we? No. But I did, were you attracted to radio or were you attracted to the stage or did you dance? What did you do? I danced. I learned to dance, but I was too tall. Uh, and I was a bit of a show-off. You would have guessed that. I don't need no, to tell you that. Never. I'm sure. Um, and we didn't have television at our house until... I was probably 15 or 16, but we used to watch it in the street, you know? Yes. You'd go and look in the shop windows. And I went to university and did an arts degree, and I actually trained to be a high school teacher and then ended up working as a lecturer in a teacher's college. And I know a whole lot of the um, students and our high-profile chaps in Adelaide, and they all said to me, thank God you got a job at the ABC. <laughs> <laughs> They're just relieved. They didn't have to but put up with... But was that difficult to get a job there? Well, I didn't set out to do that. I'd, um, I, I liked television, and I was interested in being an interviewer, mm -hmm. but I didn't really think that that was going to happen. And then Channel 7 sent out a notice, or I can't remember how I discovered it, so I'm not making this bit Probably up. Probably from the paper. Yes. In those days, these things were in Correct. the paper. Correct, in the paper, and you mm. read it. And you could go along and be in a group that they would look at as a potential person on Channel 7. I don't know what the task was. I can't remember any of that. <laughs> All I know is there were about 40 women, right. and we were sat there and we were given a lecture by somebody. Again, I can't remember who that is because it was so long ago. But... Um, 
and I don't know who got the job, sorry about that, but uh, about a month or so afterwards, somebody at Channel 7 knew somebody at the ABC and, said, and, put, and put a circle around my head in the photograph and said, follow this girl, I suppose. And I started on camera when I was, I want to say 21, but I think I was 22 or 23. Right. Well, I th you know, when you see a lineup of faces, I often mm. talk to parents about this whose children they think are mm. stars, and you say, first of all, if it's your child, the sun shines out of their face. It's that familial thing mm. that, that a parent will grasp to always recognise mm. their child. Mm. But there's something about some faces that everybody feels that about, you know. Mm. And your high cheekbones, you've got this really lovely smile. Mm. It's all of those things that would have bounced off the off the You're photo. Very I would kind, imagine. but it, I mean, it, no, no, this it's is just inherited. A, it's, it's inherited from my father. He right. would, had a, a very long German background way back there. So mm -hmm. people always saying to me, "But you're European," and I was born in Adelaide with a very British mother. Um, but. No, I was very lucky. I, but we were lucky in those days. There was lots of money in the ABC. And so when mm. we started this day tonight, the world was our oyster. We mm. could experiment. We could do whatever. We got away with... But was it, was it for women the same as it was for men then? Well, yes, all the people around me were all men. I yes. was the only female. Exactly. Um, in some ways, you could say I was spoiled. Mm. In other ways, you could say it was tough. Like, I always got sent in the middle of winter to the wharfs to interview the wharfies who were on strike because it looked probably amusing or entertaining to see a, a young woman down there amongst those guys in the middle of winter. Well, the guys would have responded differently to an attractive woman <laughs> than they would have a common old man with a microphone. Well, that's probably half true, but my worst experience of that sort was there was... Um, I was sent with a crew, and the crew were all lovely. I loved all the guys I worked with. They were all male, male crew. Uh, and very proper and very good to work with, very highly professional. Mm. And we were sent on one episode. There was a cruise ship coming in, and it was an Italian cruise ship. And um, we had to go down and on one of the pilot. We had to go out on one of the pilot little boats yes. with all the gear and the heavy cameras and God knows what. And then climb up the side of the boat, the cruise ship, huge oh, the, one. Oh, the up, actual ship? Yes, up the, on, on like what I would call like a rope ladder <laughs> to get been. to what I call the hole in the yes, side so you of can it get to in. go in. Yes. And I guess apart from being worried about me, I was ultra worried about my poor cameraman clutching this terrible thing. Yes, because they were so big. Yes, and, and so we got up and it was a huge success to have gotten up there and we were coming into Outer Harbour. Oh, that's right, I remember now. The captain had a gold Ferrari and we, I, we would talk Doesn't about every coming captain. in. Yes, <laughs> it was an Italian yeah. cruise ship, oh, okay, if you haven't guessed. Um, and it would then be taken off with a crane when we landed and um, we would then drive up, he and I, into the sunset for all the colour and movement. It was probably still in black and white. Yes, it would But have been. anyway, we shot whatever we had to shoot um, as we were coming in and the captain said, well, we haven't arrived just yet. Why don't you come and, to me and the crew, why don't you come and have lunch? Well, I never got to lunch because I got grabbed by the captain and shoved into his cabin and I have to say my whole career and indeed my, <laughs> my life was saved by my sound man who heard me screaming. Um, How and, amazing. Yes, and when we got off and got into this Ferrari, it's, you may have worked this out, he drove the Ferrari into the sunset and I just looked the other way to be ultra rude. Um, yeah, that's one of the memories of the early days of television. See, it's unthinkable in today's world, really, it's unthinkable that women were treated differently yeah. in, in the media particularly because half the population's women to start mm. with. It doesn't make any sense today and yet it's still happening. Well, um, being on camera and there were other women that then followed, I'm not talking about the ABC, I'm talking about Channel 7, Channel 9, mm -hmm. all of those lovely programs. Um, we were all in a funny way followed home or yes. people trawled after us for Absolutely. real. I mean, I had Absolutely. to have a, at one point things, someone had threatened to murder me and I had to have a police escort for three months home just to North Adelaide from the ABC. 
And um, some of that stuff was pretty frightening, but you just thought that's life and you just got on with it. It was the Hollywood syndrome almost, wasn't it? I if your face so. was coming into yeah. people's homes. They fell in love with you or they, they, they got a fetish about you, which was yes. crazy. When's somebody going to get a fetish about me? <laughs> I have I'm had about, one I'm, forever, I'm, it's okay. No. <laughs> no one's ever. No, that's not true. It has happened to me. But um, I suppose that's what it is. The reality is we're just really ordinary people mm. living an ordinary life, mm. doing a job that we particularly like to do, mm. and it takes you to places you would never go. Of course. Um, but it also takes us to some places maybe we don't want to go. Oh, Tell me about you, the you know. bathtub incident. Well, the bathtub incident is probably my most memorable. And uh, it was so memorable that it... Just hold that thought for one tick. We'll come back in a moment with the bathtub <laughs> incident. Paula Nagel is our very special guest on this episode of Our Time and we were just about to spill the beans or should I say blow away the soap suds <laughs> in a bath incident that um, you were filming for, for today, tonight. Why we were filming it, I haven't the faintest memory or idea. Because you're a girl and they wanted you to be in a bathtub. <laughs> and they wanted sex, I let's suspect. be frank. Yes. Exactly, let's be frank. Was Frank there too? No, well, no, no. he could have been. <laughs> so we so were... you couldn't be frank in actual fact? <laughs> no, I was never frank. No. But to cut to the chase, the deal was we had, I had to do this bubble bath sequence and talk to camera. And my camera, because we're in a bathroom, which well, they couldn't do this in the ABC building. <laughs> no. So where there did they go a, to? It? So we borrowed somebody's bathroom. Somebody's house, though. You yes. went to somebody's house. Yes. And lugged all those great big cameras yes. and lights. Okay. And my cameraman, who's no longer with us, but a very nice guy, he was up on a ladder in, and in, in a suit and tie. Remember that? They still wore At the these ABC. up the ladder yes. with his camera. And we had the sound man was down here, so I'm lying here in the... the uh, bath. The bathtub. And the, cam uh, the sound man's down, down here, Ken Applin, who used to work with Peter Sellers in the Ealing studio. It's a lovely, lovely man. Well, that would have accounted for the <laughs> bathtub scene, I'm sure. <laughs> well, it's, uh, well, he was just a very nice, lovely man. And both guys were great to work with. So I'm lying back there in a bikini, a colour bikini, with all this bath soap suds and bubbles. And I kept losing it in my to camera piece. And of course, the more times I repeated it, the more the bubbles went down to the point that the cameraman who's up there on the ladder said, look, it's just not working. You know, we can now see your coloured bikini. You have to take your top off. So, No, you don't take a bath with a bikini on. Well, also, when you work with a professional group, you, uh, sorry, team, you just do whatever they want. You don't, you know, you don't question is this inappropriate. So I took the top off. And I sit back and I try and do it again and the bubbles kept going down to the point that the cameraman said to the guy who used to work with Peter Sellers, oh, look, Ken, you're going to have to put, pick up bubbles from the end of the bath and just put them on her boobs or whatever. <laughs> so I just thought, that's fine, this is work, you know, it's fine. So all of that occurs and then I got it right, thank heavens. So the deal was in the old days that <laughs> Everything got edited in the afternoon. We filmed exactly this in the morning. You can feel this say. coming on, can't you? Yes. <laughs> so I get a phone call from the editing suite to say, you better come and, there's the cameraman, you better come and look at what we've got. So I march up there thinking it's probably funny, but, you know, it's just another... Sh Every day was a different yes. item. Different it's subjects. Yeah, and you just different. move on, you don't yep. worry about it, you know. Well, I did, when I saw it, I mean, there you've got this lovely man down on the ground beside the bath putting the bubbles on and it's got one of the long mics on a long... Yeah, on the boom. Yeah, mm. with the furry end. Yes. And of course it's coming up be supposedly between my legs by accident on the camera. For the angle camera. of the camera. The, exactly. So that never went to air. I wonder why. <laughs> but it did head up the funny show every year for many years for but the Christmas party. not the public party. saw. No, only for, only for the crew. For, only for the crew and yeah. all the Telstra workers because that's how they delivered it. Did oh, you that's know probably... That? No, I'm no, glad I, I didn't that. know that at that point. Yes, because I've got a couple of those too. 
that um, I've discovered are still really? sitting on the internet, so really? you never know. Well, I, I, on the 30th anniversary of this day tonight, I got a phone call. Guess what it was about? Mm. Have you got a copy of it because we want to actually finally, after 30 years, put it to air? And have you come in and sit on camera while it's going to <laughs> air and watch what your face does when it goes to air? And I didn't have it. I wasn't being rude. I would have been quite happy to do it. Life's well, short. Somebody may have that. You just and, never and we'll know. And we can do it on your program and we can watch my face, can't we? Or, yes. Well, I'll come on your program. Yeah, and with, we can do it in the living room. Hey, Paula, guess what I've got <laughs> a few. But, well, to be, but to be serious for a minute, um, I'm going to read this because I, I can't believe you've done so many things. In the last 20 years, Paula has been part of the... Is it the HAVAH, HAVA Foundation? Yeah. Is that how to pronounce yeah. it, HAVA? Yeah. Uh, also the Adelaide Festival Chairman's Circle Committee. Well, I uh, chaired that. You chaired that. Yeah. The, the Order of Australia, of course. Yeah. Also, you've been made a member of the Order of Australia for your contribution to higher education and the arts and the community. You've also been on the University of South Australia as a council, council member. Yeah. Uh, you've been a governor's le in the Governor's Leadership Foundation. I was on that board. At your board, mm. yep. Yeah. At the Department of the Premier. What did you do for the Department well, of Well, I was the International Education Advisor to Premier and Cabinet, and that's when I went overseas to negotiate with the Greek government and the Italian government to do cooperative work between our universities. Well, that's only programs. six of, of these things you've done, and I know there's about another ten more. Well, Where I did you find working. the time? Well, I can't. Right now, here we are in the middle of COVID and I, we all know I've been sick and come out of hospital and I'm fine, I'm alive and well, um, and I'm finding it really boring sitting at home <laughs> so except when we make our programs and yes. waiting for an offer because, like, it, it is so boring. I've always worked. Yes, As same you've about, done. Yes, I mean, yes. we're identicates in all but, of that. Yes, and but the thing is, it's what keeps the body and mind mm. working. That's the thing. And mm. as soon as you mm. retire, the we can't word, ever. Re we're never going to retire. What are you going to do? Of course, you're we're writing not a book. Retire. I've written a book. It went to a publisher oh, last Friday. It did. It did. It did. Yeah. What's it called? Thank you for saying that. What's it called? It's called I Brutal. I, sorry, you are I thought so I kind. acted that terribly well. <laughs> you did an extremely um, good job. Sorry, it's called Brutal. Brutal. Is that because, is it more about your life in television or the physical things that have happened to you it's lately? It's a mix and it's also, to be very frank, if it is ever published, if people ever read it, it's a combination of biography or autobiography and fiction. One makes bits up to, get, to cover up, I guess. To cover up. Well, it's based in the truth, but yeah. you just need yeah. to manipulate and, it. And so. the brutal stuff is essentially about a young woman growing up in a fairly difficult... Most people have difficult problems, probably, when they're kids. My dad was um, the biggest SP bookie in Adelaide. OK. So, you know, uh, the, the police came and did over our house when I was a little kid, eight or nine. I remember sitting up and... I, it was during the polio epidemic and yes. all our family, with the exception of my father, who was the brilliant SP bookie, um, had polio, so I was sitting up in bed home from school for a whole year with polio, and I saw these police marching, and that it's stuff like that. It's not brutal, but it sort of probably does as you grow up. It, it colours you. Yes. It gives you strength on one hand. Yeah, you fight fights. Yes, mm -hmm. but it probably also gives you insecurity on the yeah. other. Yeah. Yeah. Did you suffer from insecurity, or did? TV make it happen for you? No, TV made it happen for me. Mm. Thank you, TV. Mm. Uh, but it was a bit of a tough gig, I bet, I suspect, as a kid. And so Brutal really is about the revelations about my father. Mm -hmm. And I am my father's daughter. I even look like him. So this is not me being... He must ultra. have been gorgeous. <laughs> oh, he had, a, he had a pretty interesting life one way and another. Um, you were talking about film stars. Yeah, he had a touch of all that. Um, but Charisma. All, I think that's the word, isn't it? Charisma. Charm. Yeah, and charisma. Yeah. But then, of course, in the more recent years, I got very sick uh, on a number of occasions. And... 
Uh, some of it was slightly brutal, but I've survived it all. I'm a survivor. I think, yes, but that's very relevant to talk about yeah. because you are a survivor, because you've had cancer. Yeah, I've had cancer twice. I had breast cancer, then I had ovarian cancer. Oh, nothing like getting the daily double, really, is well, it? Well, it's how you get into the newspapers. <laughs> but, Paula, you've come through that. Oh, yeah. And you've come through that even stronger. Yeah. But you've just recently been in hospital again yeah. and discovered that you have the rarest of rare... Well, it was always going to be rare, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I've that, my brilliant doctors, and it's the brilliant doctors we have in Adelaide. I don't want people going around being rude about health services in Adelaide because I've had the best, mm. absolute best. And I had a physician that discovered when I was in hospital just a few months ago that I've got this really rare situation where I have a thing called mesenteric ischemia. It's taken me a while to learn how to I'm say all this. I'm glad you said it because I would um, have even had trouble reading that. Yeah, true. And what it means is that um, your aorta runs through the middle of your body and the arteries that were running off it were badly blocked into my guts. Hence, um, a whole lot of operations where things have strangled and gotten unhappy. And more recently, where I had a big fall when I went unconscious. Yes. Uh, and that's how the book Brutal got the name Brutal. Right. Because my head got fractured. And I was in hospital for three months and rehabilitation. And again, brilliant doctors got me out. You know, I'm a prime example of being looked after brilliantly. But that's where Brutal started. And when I came out right. of hospital that time, uh, to keep my sanity or to get the sanity back, mm. I started writing Brutal. And I hit 100,000 words a few weeks ago and oh, it's really? gone to a publisher. Oh, OK. So. Did you find, though, sort of going over your life that it just refreshed your whole reason for being? Yes, it did. It encouraged me. I think that's a very good point. However, mm. sometimes uh, writing about the tough times, about other people as well as me, um, I found that quite... I found it... When I was copy editing afterwards and I was rereading it, some of it I found quite hard to read. I didn't I really want to read it. No, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Look, short well, break and we'll be back in a tick. Our special guest has been Paula Nagel. It's been lovely talking with you. I've loved it. Um, but we haven't finished yet. No. We'll never finish you. <laughs> quite. Yeah. What do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, well, I haven't actually had time to consider that. Or grow up. I just... Well, I, no, I have never grow up. You <laughs> <No>. know that. <laughs> no way I'll ever grow up. I've Why got to would you playing. want to? Why would you want to? Because no. growing up means you've got to finish at some point. I'm never going to finish. No. Never. You've also done a bit of art. Yes, yes. I think you, when you were at my house, you saw some artwork I did. Done. Do you feel that's something you're going to pursue? Well, I used to... I had a husband who insisted that we go, many years ago, that we go to the art school at night to draw figures. He just wanted to see the nudes. Um, <laughs> but I went along and so... I was I'm, too polite <laughs> to say that. <laughs> but... Uh, so I have had some training, as it yes. were. Um, and I quite enjoy it. And I'm about to start classes in watercolour, real watercolour. Mm -hmm. I'm starting in the next few days. But that's called How to Fill in Time When You're Stuck Home by Yourself. I'm sure. And your program is sort of all but finished and you're yeah. looking now for a new season that's again. That's right. We're so looking fingers for a crossed. <laughs> well, it's... Oh, we never even talked about your makeup. I'll have to get you back to talk about that. Indeed. Because this amazing woman has also a range of makeup that is especially for... Rages and beauty, it's called. Yes. For older women. For older we women. We invented it. Mm. I think it's time for us to olden ourselves off. It's been great having your company as it has to have Paula's company. We'll see you next time on Our Time. Keep yourself nice till then. Until then.